Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is Mallory Donahue. <laughs> and right across from her is ZD Donahue. And this is going to be our uh, concluding episode for our So You Want a Costume a Show series, right? right? Now, is it? If there may be other costuming themed podcasts, but this is sort of just sort of the flow of how to do a show. And or sort of a dance troupe kind of thing. I don't even know. I don't want to. I don't want to make any promises that this was the flow. It's like right. if somebody came in and talked to Mallory and ZD, this is what they would. This hear. is what we would this say. This is how we would discourage and you. <laughs> this is this is what would happen. We would tell you these things. Well, and, well I think we're trying to yeah. sort of tell you <laughs> the like encompass what the project entails. So you get so busy and so consumed by this or at least I always did it I I can't think of anybody who doesn't yeah that I know so Mallory was I think okay if Lindsay was like um say Lindsay was a junior in high school how old would she's you have like been 16 then? or 17 then I would have been like Eight, nine, nine right ten. so I come home and Mallory is sitting at the kitchen counter and she's eating peaches out of a can. And she says, will we ever have fresh fruit again? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, only if they sell it at the break time, which is our uh, like, like a gas, gas station. station, you know, uh, quick trippy, you know, grocery storage place. So actually they do now sell fresh fruit at the break time. It's a, it's the neighborhood it's, market. It's called now. the neighborhood market with gas pumps out front. Yep. But um, I remember thinking, Ooh, pang of guilt. <laughs> and yet, I thought she was rather resourceful to go to the can of peaches. <laughs> I am making these meat pies. That's so I fed my family meat pies that that's night. Right. I was like, oh, here you go. Well, and Mallory also did benefit from some of this oh, of course. because we traveled to New York on uh, Show Choir's Dime one time. And all we did was eat and go to plays, remember? Lemon pound cake. That's all we did. And Broadway shows. That's all we did. Okay. It was what, and then we went to Disney World one time. Time, time yeah. with your family and your costuming and blah, blah, blah. Or you're like, I'm going to be in a show. And, and your I'm husband has to learn to wear a sequin dress that yeah. you need to him or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. You know, the eating peaches out of a can. Like home cooked meals. Okay, and and things that might go by the wayside right. when you're when you are engaging in such creative pursuits. Okay, something that is really cool for your kids too is to see you being creative, right? To see you doing a project, to to see you making things, to see so you finding resources. Just that, that when you, you get have a to pizza, figure it out. <laughs> and you eat with them or you – whatever. Like, you know, it's more about the quality of the time spent. They're not going to be like, oh, my gosh, my mom made hamburger helper. They must not love me, you know, or something. <laughs> right. That's not that's not what's going on. And actually, I mean, I'm seeing this a lot with uh, Zelda. So she's three. She actually helped me make the pie crust. That's right. So my yeah. butter was frozen. And you need oh, cold yeah. butter for the pie crust, but not frozen. It doesn't need to be frozen. Okay, it doesn't need to be frozen. But actually, if you're going to make pie crust with a three-year-old, it's good for it to be frozen. Because it gets warmed up. Because they take up. a long time, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I cut the butter into, like, quarter long stick things. Yeah. And I cut it up, and I put it in the fl- – I let her measure out the flour on the yeah. scale. Uh, I told her, and I, you know, figured out how much we needed, and I took right. some out. But, you know, and then I had her break up the butter, and she just had a ball. Right. Like, you know, so I, I mean, just – so this kind of I thing guess is what, good for your I, kids, too. I guess too, you're pretty you're, much convinced you were not neglected I'm because a, I costume a, so many people. I'm a good mom. You're a good mom. <laughs> people listening are good parents. You know, whether or not you're a mom or a dad or whatever you call yourself, you know. Uh, you know, showing your kids that you ha- that you make things, that you take time for yourself, I think is good. I think it's cool. I learned so much from watching you. Even though Hillary and Lindsay don't like do what I do for a living, I feel like they learn. Well, and Hillary costumes. Yeah, now. Hillary does now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, but Hillary and Lindsay are both creative people. So anyway, um, don't feel guilty. Of course, it does take a lot of time. Maybe you don't. Oh, if you Lindsay, have... Lindsay Butchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> 
that takes so much explanation. Okay, uh, but yeah, I think this I think this is really great if you're going to be involved in something like this. Okay, so during the show, during dress, let's say your costumes are on stage. I uh, what? Uh, yeah. What? Well, I have one thing that, that okay. we haven't we didn't approach the other things that is wigging people. Okay. So as the costumer, you may be responsible for the wigs. It just depends on how it's divided. Right. Okay. And more than likely, because you're not a professional, you're going to be wigging people. So if they need to be wigged, I try to stay away from wigs as much as possible. You know why? Because cheap wigs look awful. Yeah, you can't afford what you need. You can't afford what really <laughs> looks good. You really can't. So I, I've been thinking about this as a person who wants to get back into theater who right. has short hair right now. Right. I'm like, okay, if I get cast in something and they want me to have long hair, I'm going to go to the director. You go, and I'm going to say, I'm going to buy my own, my wig. own wig. Yeah. You know, because, I know we do have a black natural hair fall back there yeah you want that, you want that, you can't many theaters cannot afford no nice wigs. they're ordering halloween wigs right okay um i there was one i had to make and, it, and crazy for you we had to put wigs on the two guys because they had to look like and i want I, I did wind up buying cheap wigs but what i did is i bought cheap long wigs and then i you did cut the them cut. oh that's good right yeah. but you know now you also, can do that you also know how to cut hair yeah <laughs> you can you can also ask you know there was a hairdresser that um david mueller's mother mm -hmm. was a hairdresser and she was a great source for me i remember she, remember she got you a ponytail for, oh was uh, that right yeah that was that was actually david's ponytail from another you know, but but she was good at resourcing. If I did have a hair issue mm -hmm. or something, or I could also talk her into like, can you be here every night for the play? Blah blah blah. Because well, that's yeah. good. But um, for instance, and crazy for you, when the um, remember the all the, that's what I made the little pink. Yeah, all those girls in the Broadway show had on blonde wigs they all looked alike right, you know they're right. all supposed to look exactly the same and i made them turbans and it was the best thing i ever did right so they could look because uniform. i later now the internet wasn't a real big thing when i was doing that show and it it got more you know popular more accessible later the internet did and i started looking at comparing mm -hmm. my show to the right. other ones i show, like high school ones or uh, -huh. uh you know local theater or whatever and my turbans look so much better than the awful wigs. That's they a, just look so much better. That's a good point, too. So in the professional, like, theater and movie world and whatnot, you can get really good wigs. Right. Okay. They can also be very picky about who they cast, right? They, they might, yes. They you will know, only like, cast people I'm sure who they look a certain way. I'm sure they cast everybody whose legs were, like, almost the same length and they were right. all the same height. And they may have tried to get everybody to be a similar color, you know, and all just, that stuff. So all of you know, a lot of times in movies and in Broadway shows, even if the person has long hair or they have whatever that person is wigged they're still wigged because right. it's easier to keep the it's wig consistency styled. right yes inconsistency uh do you know that Kristen stewart in twilight she was she was young when that movie came out when uh -huh. the first movie came out too young to work the full-time hours oh. of like a you know of a union right right whatever the uh, union adult. said she couldn't do so right. she wore one of the things they did to cut back on time was that she wore a wig like the back half of her hair is a wig and she's like she's being a teenager in oregon she's right. not being like a french aristocrat you right, know it's not right, that kind right. of wig it's just some you know so that was something that cut down on time on her hair and makeup oh that's an interesting yes. idea so so that was something well that, and i think that's something you need to take into consideration is who you're costuming if you're costuming a child okay yeah. first of all make sure they have a dresser does everybody know what a dresser is a dresser means there's one person assigned to that character right to dress them and have them on the stage so you have to have a dresser for people if they have multiple changes and quick changes and some of these characters um i remember when we did evita you know hillary wound up being the dresser in Evita for uh, Tara, yeah, because she was changing clothes in the bombs. Right, she no, she Change, was ba yeah. barely off stage. She's in the wings, changing costumes. You know, literally pulling one costume off and putting the other one on. So think about that. Think about 
you know, um, the fastening of clothes, how they go mm-hmm. on and off, all of those things and the durability, you know, what kind of durability needs to be made. There's a whole difference in, if you have a character that gets to wear one costume the whole time. So this is where this – let's segue here. I think this is good from uh-huh. wigs to dress rehearsal. Yeah. This is why there are dress and tech rehearsals. Yes. And then also as a costumer, you might be asked to provide costume pieces quite early yes. for people to practice with. Especially if the, they have something to do with – say you know the script yes yeah, so in in sweeney todd the beggar woman they were like oh we need her to have a practice skirt yeah she needs ASAP. a skirt and she needs a basket because or something she, like that she right? needs this skirt because she goes around like lifting up her skirt to people right. and, you know? and, and, <laughs> and and that's another thing i think we mentioned this earlier find out if you're responsible for the purse right or or is um someone else yeah is and there then someone else that's responsible for the other props? so changing 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 costumes changing clothing right. This is important. The actors need to practice taking them off, putting them on, where right. they're going to put them. So I have to actually yes. change on the stage in this yes. show, and someone else is going to take my costume right. away. And I need to communicate, and maybe you might need to educate an actor to right. do this. I need to communicate to this person, you're going to take my clothes and put them where? Or I want mm-hmm. them put here? Yes. Or da 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 so that I know where to go at the end of the night. Here, here's so another yeah, thing, and this is this is the theater thing. Or so Mallory has someone who takes her costume off, and that person's supposed to put her costume in a certain place. So if you walk upon a costume that's laying on a bench <laughs> or a chair or a table, and you don't think it belongs there, don't not true. Touch don't it. touch it in theater. It may be there on purpose, or that person may have thought I have to put this down here, and I'll come back to it. Do not make someone look Never. all over the place for something. Okay, so so somebody we we're practicing in the theater right now, but it's set up for another show. Uh-huh. There's another show running. And it's uh, Tuesdays with Maury is running. So it's not like a super complicated set. Uh, One costume. Right. There's a wheelchair on stage. And one of the actors from Sweeney Todd, like, sat in the wheelchair and wheeled it around. And the director of the theater was like, please don't touch the props. That's not for our show. And I was like, yeah. Like, uh, you are not. uh, Well, first of all, you don't want to break it and be responsible for it. No, and you don't, yeah, you don't know why it's there. You know, yeah, don't. In fact, there's a, there's a little. So make a mental note. There's a little phrase in uh, the Columbia Theater community, and it's, no touchy proppy naughty yoursy. Okay, <laughs> so don't touch the prop right. if it's not yours. Yeah, I mean, make a mental note. You saw, oh, I saw Mallory's right. costume laying on, you know, out in the audience on a chair. I'm not sure it was supposed to make a mental note, but don't touch it. And then when somebody later says, I put down Mallory's costume and I forgot where, it's like, I saw it on the chair. Do not move mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Okay, I mean, because. Mm-hmm. There maybe maybe they left it on the chair for the costumer to pick it up and yeah, fix it. Yeah. You don't know why it's there. So don't touch anything you don't have anything to do with. Right. <laughs> That's really important. It's it's really important. So if you're the costumer, you could take it upon yourself if you're working with like kids or adolescents or something to have a little education night right. at rehearsal. Um I always ask for this time yeah, from the can, director. If you can you know, director, when do I get to do my talk? Right. So you can do your talk, you can say, Hey, um, you need to be the costumes need to be hung up every night, mm-hmm. or they or you, don't cut your hair till we talk to you. Yep, um, all sorts of things like that, or color your hair, especially now because people get you know bright pink hair and you might not want it in your show. Yeah, yeah, especially now, and right? they might spend a lot of money doing it, and then right. you're going, we don't want bright pink hair, you right? Know? So you you can do some actor education if you're working. It's a little harder with like adults or people you would assume don't need to be told to hang right. up their clothes. But you can take it as more of a, let's teach you how this theater works. Right. You can be like, well, this is the dressing room, and so, and you have a place to hang your costumes. Right. I'd love to have them in there every night so that I can do any necessary cleaning right. or blah, blah, blah. You know, you don't have to say, hey, don't be a slob. Like, no. you know, you don't have to get you just crazy say the, about and, and it. There may be things you want to hand out at that time. Uh-huh. For instance, if they are doing their own hair, you may want to give them a resource, a uh, 
you know, where to go on the internet. This is how, what the hairstyles look like at that time. Right. Or give them pictures of what the hairstyles look like at that time. Or if they're bringing in their own shoes, we would like them to look like this. Um, uh, you know, or tell them you are responsible for, you know, your leg coverings in your shoes or your socks in your shoes or whatever that you, you are responsible for your undergarments. I am requiring that every woman wears a bra. Right. This is necessary. And, you know, that's not unreasonable to tell someone what they have to wear. One reason you want them in a bra is they're going to be changing in front of people. Right. And it becomes uncomfortable for other people. Right. To see people naked. Doesn't bother me, you know, but you have to sort of think of the whole. Right. And usually it's a group dressing room kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you might even want to talk about that also, right. if you're going to use a great amount of hairspray, you may need to leave this dressing room mm -hmm. and use it because it bothers other people. Yeah, it could. You know, yeah. So you may have to, um, no, perfume's not allowed you know, or should yeah. not be allowed. People are allergic to it. All, right. all these, these seem silly and you can write them down on a list or you know, the great thing about the old internet these days is you can put these rules in a document and a lot of now, do you have a Facebook page or what? We do. What do you we have? have a group. You have for a this group on show. Facebook for the show. So that's excellent. So you can put those things. Except, I really want to post in it all the time. Post like funny things, but yeah. I don't. And think you're afraid they'll take you sarcastic. And you're afraid they'll for. take you serious. No, I'm like, oh. there are some good like. Jugs, play on Sweeney words. Sweeney Todd gifs out yeah. there, but I just don't think this is the appropriate place. Like to you're share having them. too much more yeah, fun I'm than everybody else. Yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun. Yes, exactly. So, so <laughs> you have to make sure you can communicate. And like I said, I would ask for that time. I would think about what I wanted to say. Say, you know, this is what helps this run smooth. This uh -huh. is what makes sure your costume. You know, these and there's a lot of people. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people in this cast. I can't always keep the other thing I tell used to tell people. Now I used to have a clipboard. I didn't have the internet like we have it nowadays, and everybody didn't have a the smartphone. The internet has replaced clipboards. Clip on, <laughs> yeah, it's replaced so many things. It's like wonderful. So I had a clipboard, mm -hmm. and I had a repair clipboard. So, and this is definitely something to tell everyone. So you're on stage, blah blah blah, and your button pops off of your right. dress. That had to go on the clipboard. I am character so-and-so, you know, the button popped off because you have to do this before the next show. That's right. You so have to get this on. A lot of times shows will run like Thursday to Sunday right. or Friday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so if something happens on Friday, you as the costumer, you or you have to work it out or something. Or if you have a matinee on Sunday and an evening show, guess yeah. what? You have to fix it in between. So costumers are not done once the no. costumes are finished. No. Unfortunately, right. you're still responsible. Yes. Most of the time. You right. know, be clear on this. So that's that's very important. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about, so like alterations or fixing stuff, you know, it ne that needs to happen. I want to talk a little bit about... Um, what did it, what do I have on there? Well, wait, I wasn't finished. Oh. Because what I wanted to say uh, about the clipboard oh. is one of the oh, statements yeah. I would make was, if it is written down, I don't know it. Because I can't have. If it isn't written down. Right. If it's not written, if it's not written down, <laughs> yeah. I don't know it. Yeah. Because what would happen is you would have three or four actors going, oh, my button came off. Oh, my oh, zipper sure. won't zip. Okay. This is in the middle of a show and people backstage and people are running in all these directions. How am I going to remember mm -hmm. who said that to me? What garment or, or what am I going to remember? Somebody told me their zipper doesn't work. Who the hell was that? Yeah. <laughs> no, so I would say if it's not written on the clipboard, then you have to consider it not communicated to me. Yes. So what you can have is you can have some Facebook page or whatever that they can go to and do this or you can have a clipboard i think i was just thinking about this sometimes in these groups and stuff not everybody sees everything or right and actually something well that's what i'm saying it might be something that you might want to have specific to yourself or something i, will I don't say know sometimes too many um oh, Channels of communication, yes, I think can get a little confusing to if me. If they're at one so on one site, you mean? It's or? like there's a Facebook group, but then we also get emails, uh -huh. and then I also got a text message. Yeah, and I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I'm I'm able to keep track right, right. now, but I thought, oh, I could see myself getting a little confused, right. you know. So anyway, uh, that's something to keep in mind. I wanted to talk about practice clothing and then um, damage. 
prevention. Okay. Yeah. Which it also goes along with this pre talk that That's, you have with yeah. them. Yes. So when you do the one reason to have a practice skirt, you know, for a character or something like that, or a practice hat or a practice jacket, you know, it's not only to give the character a chance to practice with it, but don't don't rush to get that final product into their hands because right. maybe it doesn't need to be rehearsed in for six weeks right. in a theater where stuff's under construction right. or things are getting painted. They're painting the stage. Okay, yeah. so I, the set. I, I would say that, like, you know, talk to your director, talk to your actors about things like that. The paint's wet. Right. Please be careful. Also, sometimes I remember quite a few things happening where there were like rough edges on a set. Yes. And then there would be like snagged mm-hmm. tights yep. or blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, so that's important. You could instruct your actors to have extras of things like tights. Yes. You never, could... never one pair of pantyhose yeah. or one pair of tights. So in, uh-huh. in fact, even socks, you'll lose one. Yep. You know. So sometimes in shows, uh, I know in high school they did this a lot. It was like, your socks are due by yes, such and such a exactly day. that's exactly what I did. And your socks and shoes are due on this day. So we yes. would bring the socks to the costume. everything is labeled. Labeled, labeled, labeled. Label, label, label. You have to figure out a way to label the costumes they're currently wearing. I used to use tool tape and a little gold safety pin on the inside. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to have to, to do that. Also, something we didn't mention earlier is... If you have a costume shop and you have, um, you know, garments that you're keeping track of or you're loaning out, you need to have a label with that costume shop's name in it. Sure. And those can be bought on the internet cheap, like thousands for like $4 or right. something. I don't know. Just get a printed label that says such and such costume shop. And you can now put like the web address or something in there where, you know, somebody can contact yeah, you. Yeah, that's really nice. So preventing that damage and then fixing the damage right. and keeping, you know, keeping all your ducks in a row and everything. And the costumes stay at the theater. Mm. Just because you have a really cool costume and you think you might want to show it to somebody or take it home or something. Oh. No, no, no. And it, if, you know, you can't wear it out and think it's not going to get hurt. So one rule uh, that it often was put into place was you cannot eat. Yes, in your you costume. cannot eat in your costume. This is really important to convey yes. to everyone because you know we would have parents I think who weren't aware of this rule, mm-hmm. and they would bring like a cake yep. to the dressing room yep. for the kids to eat at intermission. Yep. And I was like, hey, that's really nice, but like, right. what if someone drops? Icing on their costume right. in the middle of the show. Like, what would you do? Black then? icing on yeah, the white or, wedding or, dress, or whatever. Or white icing on their right. black. You know, blah blah blah. So, I th- that's a, that's important. Now we're gonna be eating pies in our costumes. Well, and <laughs> um, I've had instances where kids have had to eat, like especially in show choir, and we've had to feed them, and oh yeah, it's too much trouble to undress. And I would bring, I would I, w- I would go to Goodwill or uh-huh. the resale shop or, or into the costume shop. And I would get button huge ups. button up shirts yeah. and I'd let them put them on backwards if they wanted to put, but you know, they were covered up enough that if something, you know, exit now, sometimes they would spill a whole Coke on themselves and we'd be in the bathroom, dr- you know. Well, that's, a, no, that's but, a really good point. And of course, like, if you're you know, doing my Fiddler role, on my, the roof. Right, my role was water. <laughs> yeah. You get to have water. And sometimes, sometimes we would do candy. Like hard candy yeah. because it helped their throat. You know, or but something. if you're doing Fiddler on the Roof and that shows so three hours long, long, and it's a high school and they had to get there at five thirty, and then uh-huh. the show didn't start till six thirty, you know, of music. maybe someone's yes. gonna eat something, of course. But that you know, that's that's something to keep in mind. Uh, should we talk about? Should we take a break and come back and talk about cleaning? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, all right. Well, uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> everybody it's Mallory here in your message break and I just want to make an announcement or a disclaimer or whatever we're supposed to call it that we are going to start using affiliate links as a, a way to get support for the podcast and for our website and everything like that 
Uh, Mom, do you know what an affiliate link is? <laughs> okay, she's affiliating me with something and I have no idea what this is about. Yeah, I totally like used, you know, our, our tax ID number to, yeah. you know, da, da. so what an affiliate link is. I'm going to wind up like in jail and not know what I'm being charged with. Is yeah, that prob- right? Probably. Okay. Uh, no, because we're disclaiming it right now. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> affiliate links. I'll just need a lawyer. I yes. won't go to jail. Yes, okay. Yes. And we'll make money from the affiliate links to pay for the lawyer. <laughs> So ZD's going to need to keep her butt out of jail. No, we're doing it all right. Okay, so here's the deal. Affiliate links are links that we post uh, that maybe to Amazon or or to other products or on other platforms. And when you click through and you buy things on Amazon or, or you subscribe to something, you know, that we're an affiliate for, we get a kickback. Okay. Oh, we make money? Yeah, we make a little bit of money. And what's really cool about the Amazon thing is uh, you know, you make we make the kickback on on everything you buy. <laughs> so, uh So if they buy a refrigerator, I can make I can make money on it. That is correct. Hey everybody, buy a refrigerator. No, we're not. Okay, so the, that's something we're not supposed to do, right? Oh, we're not I, supposed to, I, that's, so now I am going to wind up in yes, jail. So the terms of service, though, I just want to let you all know is that we have to disclaim like, "Hey, we're an affiliate for this or this, you know, when we share this tracing paper from Amazon that has free shipping, this is an affiliate link. You need to know that I am not just innocently recommending this. Uh, and we will get a kickback on that. So you're going to see some of those in the group. It's never going to be uh, crap that we don't I was going to say, like. even though we could endorse crap. We won't. We're not going. We're actually going to maintain our ethics. <laughs> yes. Okay. And we're going to find you things at places that ship fast. Uh, we're going to recommend products that we really enjoy using. If you've ever ordered something from us, you may have noticed that Mallory is not the most organized uh, shipper and packer. So we are going to play to our strengths and really focus on creating the podcasts, the videos, the online classes, and allow other businesses that are really good at shipping things <laughs> to ship <laughs> things to you. So just be aware that we will be using those affiliate links. Uh, there are lots of ways to let you know. I can just say this is an affiliate link or sometimes people use hashtags and I've been getting really creative and using and it's been a lot of fun already in the group. So uh, just heads up, we're going to be doing that. And if you click on an affiliate link, know that if you purchase something, you'll be supporting SoHere.com. And we so appreciate it. Good idea, Mal. So, 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 sewing out loud. And we're back. So that was intermission. That was intermission. Now yeah. this is the on track, right. right? Right. Okay. Okay. Cleaning. Cleaning. Cleaning costumes. Or at least keeping them from not stinking. From one not or the other. Smelling up the theater. That's right. Yeah. So you've got, if, um, I know local theater, oftentimes they have four or five shows a week. And yeah. then, you know, they might have three on the weekend. They might have like a matinee on Sunday with an evening show also. So you could be talking like oh, real Broadway, like seven or eight shows a week. You know, whenever we had a matinee on Sunday and then we didn't have an evening performance, I always felt a big letdown as a oh, kid. Yeah. It was like there was more day after the show <laughs> and nothing was going to be as exciting as, your show. as the show. And I was like, well, I just want to go to sleep. Like, you know, the, you know the feeling you get right. after like a party, you know, like or right. your friends leave like after the sleepover. Right. And you're like, oh. Christmas isn't here yeah, anymore. Yeah, Christmas is over. Anyway. Thought I'd share that. Um, Lots of shows. Okay. Stuff so, gets stanky. Definitely a squirt bottle of vodka. Vodka, vodka, vodka. Okay. So if you're in a school yes, or a college that says it's dry and you can't bring alcohol to, you know, a high school, my alcohol was labeled cleaning fluid. Right. And I had kept the bottle of vodka in my car. In fact, I think I have a picture of you pouring vodka into a bottle, a uh, spray <laughs> bottle. Um, you know, when we were at Columbia College. It really is. It. We're not being like cheeky and like no. stuff here. It really is the best thing. It is the best thing use. I have ever found. You yeah. can use rubbing alcohol, oh. but well, it smells. It smells. It yeah. keeps vodka takes away it. It its smell evaporates. Mm-hmm. It dries quickly. It takes it away. So, especially between matinees. 
or, or a, a matinee, matinee evening, evening show, you do not have time to do any laundry, right? You do not. Right. Wh- whether you have a washing machine there or not, you do not. You do a not. A what machine? A washing machine. I think you almost said washing machine. Oh, a, wash, a washing machine. <laughs> From Missouri. A wa- it's a washing, wash. washing it's washing machine. It's washing machine. <laughs> so anyway, if you have a washing machine or not, you just don't have time to, you know, to because you're doing other, you'll still be doing other things too. Sure. So, and you know, what if it has to be pre- So you need to, you're going to be spraying the pits. Pits okay, and crotch. And crotch for sure. And maybe it's any other place. Okay. Even Who if. Who knows? Okay, let's pretend like you had a time turner from Harry Potter, okay? And you could create enough time to, like, wash a costume between every show. It's not a good idea. Well, no, you'll wear them out. You'll wear out the costume. So it's not – not only do you not have time for the the washing machine and the dryer and the pressing, it's not – it's not always good. And it's not of, practical. Also, some course, things are not washable. Right. What of if course, you have a wool jacket? Yeah. Poor, you know, poor person has to wear a wool jacket on stage. Right. Under the lights. They're going to sweat like a pig. And, you know, turn it inside out, spray the pits, and let it hang. Oh, and spray now, spray until soaking. You can spray until it's to- it's it's almost saturated. Like, like yes. the pits are soaked. Yes, yes, yes. And what you do is have a fan. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh-huh. And you can put a the faster it dries, supposedly, the better it takes away. Oh, really? The, the, I, I didn't know the that. The odor, I guess, or something sometimes. Um, I've had to spray twice. Uh, I've had to do a little bit of a therapeutic vodka treatment yeah. to my couch. My kid just vomited so much <laughs> all over the like the arm of and this couch. He just wouldn't. Don't you know she brings in the kid vomiting into the costuming uh, bro- Well, podcast. okay. It's just it's so amazing. much vomit. No. We were like. It, it just kept well, happening. I told you that happened to me. Over. That happened to me at the condo. Yeah, with, the kids. Yeah, just with ca- um, so, Mallory's little boy, and so, I was like, I, we went out and bought vodka. So Derek uh, is cleaning the couch. Right. He actually did like a really great job, but it still smells, you know, like stomach acid. I yes. think is really, yeah. and of course, it's all milk. Somehow the vodka you know. tends to neutralize better than the rubbing alcohol. I don't know why. So even though Derek had cleaned this right. like with soap and stuff, I had to do vodka treatment. I had to do it again. Right. And you know, some of it I think is yes. a little bit well, of time it, with that. It, but it may evaporate and come more to the surface. Yes. Too. Yes. So and, you're saying you may have to spray twice. You want right. it to dry quickly. And then I hear the argument. Well, I just buy Febreze. No, you guess that's what? Not, First of all, people are allergic to it. It's no. People can be, it can hurt someone's voice. Okay. It truly can. They can be allergic to it. It can swell their uh, vocal cords. I mean, we're talking problem here. It it's, smells terrible. Okay. They're just different products. Another thing, I too, mean, is it has a fabric softener in it. Yeah. And it coats, it, it will coat the fibers. And then the and then later, if the odor gets in it, it won't come out at all because you've coated these. The fibers become sticky. I guess that's what I should say. Well, it's like spraying soap on something. Yes, it I is. I mean, it's like so. so yeah. Do, now I have used a Febreze bottle with vodka in it to fool the powers that be. Right. Yeah. And you don't want to tell the kids vodka's in it. No. Okay. No, you don't. Yeah. And just, keep it. Just my kids knew it. I could trust them not to tell anybody. You know, but you, you know, don't. First of all, you don't want them drinking it, or you don't want them drinking what they think might be vodka, and it truly and it's is for breeze sort of, or something. Yeah. You also, if like, I mentioned this casually to a director that we, I was like, oh well, I'll use vodka to spray those down, and then they were like, just freaking dead serious that yeah. I not bring this on campus. Yeah. And I lied, and I was like, okay, I won't use it. <laughs> I brought no, it in. I'll use, I'll use another solution. I, yes, what I brought I it say. in. I, you know, it's just in a spray bottle, and it wasn't, it wasn't a problem at all. Put but, a skull and crossbones on it. But I guess I want to say that person needed to have deni- plausible deniability. They needed to, right. to. They needed to. You didn't need to say to the director, no. "Oh, well, I'll sneak it in. It'll no, be all right." No. You just, they didn't need to know that that's what you were. And using. like you said, it is best if the clothes can stay at the theater. And There's, the other thing too is, you're buying the cheapest vodka on earth. It is almost poison. It does not taste that great. Derek uh, felt embarrassed. Yeah, he came and got my laundry vodka one time no, to drink, he didn't felt, he? No, he felt embarrassed that that was election night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> understandable. <laughs> um, he went to the liquor department to buy the aristocrat vodka, right. and he said that he like he was like, well, I told him it was for cleaning, and I was like, so you you really felt like you were that embarrassed? Yeah, that embarrassed to buy the plastic. He candle felt of very vodka. aristocratic and did not want yes. anyone to know he was buying cheap vodka. I was like, okay, honey, like yeah. I wouldn't have. 
but well, whatever. I'm embarrassed that I buy a gallon of vodka at all. It is a lot of vodka, <laughs> but it goes. It does right. go kind of fast. And people will say, "Oh well, I'll dilute it with water. Will it work no. as well?" You, sometimes it will work as well, but it won't evaporate. That's right. So if don't you're working on the evaporation. Yes, don't don't dilute it with water because it will stay wet longer. Right. And you're working for speed here. So the. The alcohol will not damage most things. Right. Maybe you do want to do a little spot check, but most of the time, the alcohol is not going to stain. Right. It's not going to discolor. Right. It's just going to evaporate really quickly, and it's going to be fine. The other thing when you have your little talk about um, people wearing deodorant. Oh, yeah. You might want to make sure they don't wear, like, the powdered, sticky, white kind. You need to really encourage them to wear something that is garment friendly. Uh huh. Because what happens is, as they're putting on the garment, that deodorant gets on another part of the I've garment. I've also been in a situation where someone said, you know, if you really like that stuff, tr- wear a tight undershirt. Right. You can. Um, you can. They can wear you know, an undergarment. Yeah, absolutely. Be great. And absolutely. So that, that is important. And of course, there are costumes that are more like sculptures that, you know, take a lot of care. Right. Uh, talk to a specific actor about that. And then if you are work, I think about kids with this type of thing. Right. I was a mother ginger child in the Nutcracker. Yeah. And we had to be taught about how to treat the mother ginger costume because we came well, in under underneath the skirt. it. Right. Yeah. So we had to be taught about someone else's costume. Right. Um, you know, about someone else's prop right. or whatever. So whatever kind of education well, you have to do and, about and, that. You know, when you're when you are working with children. The thing of involve the parents or not is a big question sometimes. Sometimes the parents are more problems than yeah, the child. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? <laughs> um, especially if the child is in the ensemble. Now, if you have somebody who is like Annie and Annie and you have right. issues, you, want, you know, address that parent separately and mm-hmm. say, you know, she's going to need this and this and this and this because obviously – that person's going to meet, maybe need more costume attention right? Yeah, than somebody that's in the ensemble. I prefer to keep the parents at bay. Um, Most of the time it works better that way. You will get somebody will say, I will help. I will help corral right. the children. And they're backstage taking pictures. Mm-hmm. Okay, you cannot take pictures and corral like 14 orphans. Right. You know, I'm sorry. You just wanted to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, you did not want to help. So so you might have to be careful. Now, there are people you can trust. Oh, sure. Anyway. And, and, and different different um, community isn't different. Uh, what do I want to say? You know, situations. Like somebody in the group was talking about how the productions they were involved in. They were part of their church. Right. Like, and they were really big productions. This is like uh-huh. a gigantic, yeah, you yeah. know, church. Yeah, we have churches here that have humongous stages. And right. Sound and so I thought, well, of equipment. course, it's not like, I mean, I'm sure people like had to audition and stuff, but that's a different situation it is than a different like a situation. professional theater or right. even a theater where something was auditioned. So, right. of course, there's a bit more like community involvement, right. you know. And actually, she's she said she was listening to the podcast and she's like, oh, I've never been in a show where someone else gave me a costume. It's right. like we were all told to. And that happens. Some, you know, yeah, of course, right. go get our own, right. you know, or whatever. And it, that, of course, happens too. So, yeah, kids, um, instructing people, like maybe if you're, putting them in something a bit complicated like go to the bathroom before yeah, you get into to this show time as possible corset or whatever or you know i mean i can go to the bathroom of course it but i just you know, well and that. when you do have children in a show like that yeah i, I andy keeps coming up and i think that you know hillary's one. getting ready to do that That's a good one. you have all these kids and they're a lot of times they're a little bit of an age range too. you need to have things backstage for them to do Good, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. you know, you need to remove them from, you know, the wings, and they need to be maybe have an area where they can color, where they um, can do something that, that that won't hurt their costume. Yeah. At least in Annie, most of the time you have to worry about the costume because they're orphans. They're in rags. Uh, like. Theater is such a great activity for kids right. to do. So it teaches them not only how to maybe sing or dance or memorize lines, right, but how to respect, like, you know, other people working and how to Well, listen. you have to have concert manners. You yeah. have to listen. You have to be quiet. You right. and, and you have to, um, 
yet take this direction and you you're part of this like machine yes and it's a team and you know just like just like team it, like a team would be in you know soccer or something i think it also i think you know that one of the things i like about it too is you know something like annie where you know the kids are in the ensemble they're just as important as anybody else in the show sure. because you need, you know, we need you up there and we need you paying attention. Mm-hmm. You're just as important as Annie or as Daddy Warbucks yeah. or whatever because you're part of the show. And if you weren't here, we couldn't do this. No, it's show. really cool. They have a they have a job, and I right. think I, you know, I can't wait if if Zelda's still liking, you know, to do stuff like this. I think it's just fun to watch the kids really. Right. Well, we watched Catherine and Godspell, and I just. We lost went crazy, it. Right? I just cried. You she know, went, wow. She reminded me something about your mother. I was totally freaked. Okay, we, um, we got off on the kid tangent. Yeah, <laughs> and, and there's, you know, I think we should address makeup because we were talking oh, about deodorant yeah, and perfume yeah. and things. Talk and then that. after that, I I have one more thing I want to address. Yeah, talk about makeup though. The button up shirts. Exactly. If they want to bring an apron or a cape, um, robes. Like I will tell you that. Um, the kimono robe that mm-hmm. we published for everybody is a great thing to have. Okay, so you can eat in it, you can put makeup on it, you can wear it when you're not in your costume, all of that you, stuff. You don't really, in a lot of cases, want to put on makeup and then put on the costume, right? Because you will smudge your right. makeup quite possibly. Right. Um, I would. <laughs> for a lot of my roles, I would paint on some cleavage. Uh, so right, right. There's things <laughs> you know, like that. I want to have my costume on and then do the makeup. And so to to protect the costume, you can wear a robe, you can wear a button up shirt. Yeah, uh, that's that's really great. But what if someone does get makeup on the costume? What should you have around? Well, the well, I mean, we do have vodka. Don't spray makeup with vodka right away. Yeah, the alcohol can set the the the, the color the colors. Okay? Vodka is removing bacteria. Right, right. Um, I. Nowadays, what I really like are baby wipes. Yes, that's what I thought you were going to say. Because they are made, you know, to sort of dissolve oil. Mm-hmm. They are gentle. Right. And you're using one, and then when it gets, you know, when it gets whatever, you know, the makeup on it, you're throwing it away. You Okay. Also, you have baby wipes for those actors to take their makeup off. Yeah. All of those things. And just because they're butt wipes doesn't mean if they use it, their face will start looking like a butt, you know. <laughs> but um, now, there are makeup wipe removers. They're the same thing, guys. They're, okay. They're just more expensive. Big advantage of having kids. So if you're a person without children, treat yourself to some baby wipes in your life. Okay. Yeah. We use them. Carry them in your car. Yeah. Carry, like, because, you know, after you have a baby, you got to carry these baby wipes around, right? And you're like, oh, uh, some other situation has come up, and I am so glad. <laughs> and I have a baby wipe. I have a baby wipe. I'm well, so I always, cool. I always, like, put <laughs> the, I always put them in the bride's, yeah. you know, no, emergency is, kit. It is the most useful thing. You got a wet wipe Baby around. wipes will take off lips that, like, you cannot believe. Yeah. It, 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 it is amazing. So if you don't have um, baby you also wipes. Want, and, and paper towels. Yeah. I always have paper towels just in case. So if you, you know, if you have a garment and it's off the person, you need to slip the paper towel underneath when you go to work. You know, on the top right. because you don't want to transfer you don't want it to, to the, another. Right, you don't want to transfer it to another piece of the garment. So. And you will get rubbing of makeup. You'll get stuff on the neck, bad. And neck. that's where disdain comes in the when neck. you do your final laundering. Yes. So um, remind we have everyone the disdain of disdain recipe all over the place, and it is um, one part water, one part non-sudsing ammonia, and one part liquid laundry detergent. Liquid laundry, laundry, not dish soap, not Dawn, not that kind of stuff. Liquid laundry detergent. We, I used to say one part whisk because that was a very popular and one uh-huh. of the only laundry detergents that was out there. But I have since used any liquid laundry detergent. That mix in a spray bottle. If you get a stain, you think you squirt it on there right away, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and then when you go to do your final cleaning of your costumes, which is after the show is over. Right. And you're cleaning them to put them away. And this is absolutely essential. If you leave body odor or body oil oil Uh or deodorant or whatever is on there, if you leave it in the costume and let it set. It's going to rot it. It Mm -hmm. also draws bugs. Yeah. Um, All these things. It also will rub up on the costume next to it. So it's essential that you not put dirty garments away. So if you're, if you are, 
you know, as a costumer, you're going to be treating things. Right. But this would be just another tiny piece of education to put put those baby wipes in the dressing room. Yes. And on your education night, you could say, hey, there are baby wipes in the dressing right. room. If you get lipstick on, blah, blah, you take that baby right. wipe or come to me or something. Right. The other thing that's nice for shoes, besides yeah. baby powder, is to have uh, mini pads, like sanitary napkin mini pads that, with, that have the sticky on them. They stick in the bottom of a shoe. Uh-huh. Some people will sweat more than other people. Some people's feet will sweat more than other people. You know Some people's feet will stink. Some people's won't. So it it can be very, very individualized. I was working in this show right. at a rehearsal, and we were just walking around, and I had to, like, put my arm through this guy's arm, and I was right. like, oh, you know, this guy's a sweater. Like, yeah. and, you know, and yeah. this person's not, and this person right. is, and you right. go up and dance with somebody Every, else. Everybody, and, somebody, yeah. some people will want, you know, baby powder in their shoes. Some people won't. Right. Um, but I really, the, the thing about, you know, the little, little mini pads, Pads to put in your shoes is they absorb the uh, the moisture. They um, cushion it just a little bit, uh-huh. and then you throw them away and you put another the, one there in. There you go. You know. There you go. And so the stinky, you know, they absorb the stinky too. Basically, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get ones that are flavored, so to speak, that have deodorant in them, or Not ones without. To use those on your vajayjay, everyone. I, right. I get the plain ones. Yeah. You know. Um, you can put those panty liners on your feet, though. With right. The... You can put, and, <laughs> and they won't make your feet start looking like a vagina. <laughs> that, that it won't transfer. But, um. <laughs> I love it that that's, like, your joke now about the butt wipes. You're like, you think so? use butt wipes on my face, but on my face, not going to look good. Okay. All right. Our, uh, so we talk well, about makeup? makeup. And, <laughs> You know, who's responsible for the makeup usually is the actor. And this is even in an equity house. Mm -hmm. Equity actors can be asked to do their own makeup. Right. And a lot of people like doing their own makeup. Um, They they don't mind it that much. Well, a makeup artist isn't a good one to do his makeup. That's very expensive. Right. I mean, mean, a makeup artist is expensive. Um, How many do you need? You know, you can't have the whole cat. Now, you can give guidelines for makeup. I, I would talk to the director. Yeah. Um. And in dress rehearsal, you should ask for full makeup because you will, people who are not used to makeup or what they need on stage, they may get up there and they wash out. They look like they have no cheeks. They look like they have no lips. No nose. And you're going to have to instruct them to use more color. Right, right. Yeah, you know, and all all skin tones and contouring is such a big thing now. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, that's stage makeup. You know, when that started right, it really is. getting. It's stage makeup. Yeah, that's stage well, makeup. Well, you know, there's no longer any reason to buy stage makeup. Right. There's so much You're, makeup. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, it's the, amazing. Yeah, you used to be like, oh, I got to go buy the Sta- stuff. Yeah, you used to have to go get the kit. We used to order kits yes, for people. Yes, no, you know. a lot of makeup nowadays yeah. is so. It doesn't matter. Go to Ulta or Walgreens. It's such a lasting makeup. The CVS it's, or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Available in so many shades, and there's so much stuff out there. Yeah. The only reason, and this might not even be your thing if you're the costumer, you know, if you have to do some kind of like wound or specialty right. makeup on someone's face. Which, and there's a lot of oh internet God, stuff on that. That is so much fun. That is so much fun. And there's a lot of internet stuff on it. Just a little Elmer's glue and some paint. And you got a good scar. Oh, man. I, I got to do, I really want to do this because I don't have very big eyelids. Okay. Like, you know, if you think of Beyonce and how there's like a thousand acres of eyelid to do such cool eye makeup on, right? Okay, so Zidi and I have these itty bitty little eyelids, and there's not a lot of room. We have little faces. So, in my stage makeup kit in college, there was the paste where to it could your cover eyebrow. your eyebrow, and, you could put it up higher. and then I put it up higher, yeah. and I had I just loved doing that. It I was really like, this is your so cool. Eye yeah, I was like, I can put my eyebrow way and up false, here. People might want to try false eyelashes; they're a good idea. Oh yeah, yeah. those are great. Those are All great. All this stuff needs to be tried and to beforehand. Yes. Okay. Yes. Beforehand, days beforehand, even probably before dress rehearsal. Yeah. But um. And I just wanted to bring up, there is something called, we talk about dress, we talk about full dress. There's something called tech rehearsal, yes. which is a little different. It might include lighting changes and uh, set pieces being moved where maybe the people aren't in full costume. And the other thing is, know that that takes a really long time. Yeah. Because they're like, stop. Stop, You know, stop, where's stop, the stop. front porch supposed to be moved to? <laughs> Who's moving the front porch? Yeah. That's another thing um, that we had to think about. So... When you're, we were talking about durability of yeah. costumes, non equity players sometimes are required to move set pieces. Uh huh. 
So, you know, you can't have a flimsy costume if if your, you know, character right. has to move the front porch right. well, or whatever. That's the reason or have the that, tree. That's the reason to have that practice skirt, right? That's right. They that's, can practice that's the reason, with the skirt. They yep. can accidentally rip the practice skirt when they're moving right. the benches out of the pie shop or whatever, you know. So, yeah, that's good. That's a great that's a great point, too. All um, right. The well, la- well, the last, last thing, thing. The last thing I want to talk about is like volunteers or people, you know, somebody who may want to help you be your staff or something like that. Um, It's kind of a word of warning. (laughs) And I think because most of you out there are probably have some experience in just sewing in general. And, you know, people will say funny things to you like, oh, my mother sews too. Oh, so-and-so makes quilts. Because they make quilt does not mean they can put a zipper that in they for can put, you. you know, or they can do what you well, need. And not I, even not even the quilt thing just even if they say well you know people used to come in the shop but and people say used to tell us they could sew and honestly they just couldn't. Yeah. I, I mean, mean we had somebody uh, say, "Oh, I made all of my daughter's clothes." Da, 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 da. And she came in the next week and said, "I don't know how to put a sleeve in." And I thought, "If you made all your daughter's clothes while she was growing up, she never had a sleeve?" Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know where she's coming from. I don't know why she said that. I maybe she forgot, but she didn't say sure, that. Sure. Sure. She acted like she had never put in a sleeve. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I will tell you it's a few things that have happened to me besides the terrible alteration thing where the woman cut out all yeah, of mom, the Yeah, mom's been burned a couple times. You know, um now I thought this was simple, okay? This was a show choir change. And, um, you know, we're running up to the last minute or whatever. And somebody said, I said, well, and I've got all these things, you know, all these vests I have to put Velcro on. So the best sort of like went over the head. It was, they started out doing um, 76 trombones and then they just took these things off. Right. Well, they had just a, like a little like two inches of velcro on each side they were like what i would call a penny uh-huh. you know it went over their head sure. it's red it had some uh sequins on it so it looked like a bandish uniform right like a band these were used with white too with, with the with yeah. the white uh, skirts i believe so so anyway somebody said oh i can do that so what i did is i had all the velcro cut yeah, I had it cut for them. I had it in the plastic bag. Yeah, you know, I had it in plastic bags, and then I sent one done like I wanted it done. Right. With specific written instructions. Oh man. Okay. I did not look at these before they went to dress rehearsal. She said she was going to deliver them to the school. Fine, you know. I thought I really thought this was a responsible person. Didn't even occur to me. So, Lindsay, it was Lindsay's. Uh, show choir at the time she was in it and she gets in the car i said how did i could not be at rehearsal Uh she gets in the car and she says the velcro on the vest doesn't work (laughs) and i said that's impossible like what do you mean velcro doesn't work yes it, it i said i know it works i they were i actually stuck the pieces together right right that i gave her you know Uh she had put all the hook on one side and all the loops on the other side. Right. So they, you know. They didn't go together. Right. No. no. Instead of putting, like, all the loops and, of. you know, this isn't this isn't to say that this is, like, a bad person. No. You just have to be prepared that the, if you. Right. That's, that's 20 costumes. It they, was 40. No. It was. It was 80 pieces of Velcro. 80 pieces of Velcro. Yeah. So it was four pieces of Velcro for each. Yeah. Costume. So. What I had to do that night was take off. I only took half of it off. Right. You only had, yes. Right. right. And then switched it. And and then flipped it. So I only had to take off 40 pieces of Velcro off of satin. Yeah. And I think she used the tightest stitch possible. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately, I gave her thread that matched. So, Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was even, and it was red. But it was just like. Oh my God! I have to do these all right now. Yes, like I went without sleep to do these because right. I had other things, you know. So um, no, it makes. In fact, I feel like sometimes I'm when I go to volunteer or tell someone that I can help them. Mm-hmm. You know, 
I'm hesitant. I don't want oh, I'm very I don't careful. want to yes. make them feel like they have to give me something or like I'm intruding on right. their work flow and or something like that. And I will like very often say, "Oh, you know, I have done this a different way. Do you want me to tell you about uh-huh. it?" Instead of like if I think I have a better idea well, or I'm, like a more efficient idea. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, um, and if they say, no, I want, I, I mean, it's their show. It's their show. It is their show. Well, if it screws up, it is their show. Well, and then you I know? think we brought this up before. I was in a show once where I said I could help and she sent me home to tell me to do something and her instructions, right. I knew were not we're going wrong. to yield right. a good result. And I told, I, I was like, I shouldn't have asked. Right. I should not have asked to help right. because I'm not comfortable making and this. And you didn't know her. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not comfortable making this knit skirt out of this woven fabric. It's right. not going to fit anybody. And then people are going to be like, oh, Mallory Donahue made that. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> so, um, and most people are well meaning. Absolutely. Sure. There are some people that just want to stick their nose in it. I mean, of course. You know, yes. I mean, but, <laughs> and I have had. Some of my best help has been from people that could not sew. Yeah, the good they listeners. They would come in and yeah. they would say, I really want to help. Is there something I can do that's not sewing? And I might start them out on something that wasn't sewing. And I was like, this person listens. Yeah, you yeah, know? that's and what you need. Do you remember, the, were you there the tap pants time? Yes. Where the lady put all the tap pants together wrong? Oh, yep. my God. Yep. Oh, my God. But I, it, I was going to bring up that sometimes it can be nice to, so that time, the tap pants time, you had a bunch of parents come to the old shop. Yes. And put these together. Right. Where, like, you think you can keep your eye on people. Now, I had them all <laughs> cut out, ready to go, matched up, you know. Yeah, and still they got put together yep. incorrectly and you were using sergers. You were like, okay, this yep. can go faster. I can set up all these sergers. Yep. Da, 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 da. And yeah, so it sometimes can be more yeah. trouble than it's worth. Even when you get a lot of volunteers, I guess, I guess you isn't know, that awful for, I mean, I, we're just I, I know. <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I hate to warn, but I hate to yeah. say this, yeah, because, I know. you know, but, um, and maybe some of them aren't so well-meaning well, because why aren't they listening to you? Well, do you know what I mean? It's just... Yeah, no, I do have to y- say that because wonder. sometimes when we have, uh, in the past, you know, I feel like you and I, when we're speaking right now, we're kind of trying to protect ourselves and not be like, we don't think humanity is terrible or <laughs> yeah. or somebody's going to be like, ZD and Mallory are snobs or whatever. But like, no, it's possible there are people in the world who screw other people over. Well, and they don't care what the show looks like. Right. Their name's not on it yeah. or whatever. No, I used to tell everybody seven. their name was going in the program. There you go. No, your I did. I'd say, you know, you're here helping. Your name's going to the program. Uh-huh. I figured that scared them into listening to me. But... um Honestly, the people that did not know how to sew, that it they felt were... like they truly wanted to help. I mean, I practically taught this one woman to sew. Right. Because I finally put her on. I said, I think you can do this. Come uh-huh. here. And she wound up being one of my best. She, man, she can make a circle skirt just like that. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I was like, isn't this funny? She came here not knowing how to sew. I have these other people that say they know all this stuff and they're screwing everything up. I mean. Because they're doing it. Well, and the other thing about costuming is. Sometimes you're not doing it exactly the way that a garment might be put together in another I instance. Just, I just want to say that, like, reflecting on myself, I would, being a person, I do know how to sew, okay? Right. I've made my own jeans. I've made dresses. Right. I've made all this stuff. I have made a lot of things. Right. I teach other people how to sew. And I would find it very inappropriate to go up to a designer and say, like, designer of the show I'm in right. right now, and say, hey, I know how to sew, so, you right. know, blah, 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 blah. If I did anything, I would say, hi, I'm experienced. Right. If you need any help, I'd be happy to listen. You know, if there's anything that that you need right. some support on, I would be available. Right. Like, I would, I guess, so, like, when people come up to you and say that they know everything, What's their motivation behind that? I don't know. Because I've know? certainly had yeah. people come up to me and say, I'm willing to sew on snaps and buttons, anything by hand, but don't put me on a machine. Right. I love that person. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, I, I just want to make a warning that when somebody says, I can sew, and then, you know, you have to be careful. It's a political thing. It's Oh, sure. You know, you can't say, what do you mean you can sew? Tell me what you've sewn. You if can't you, give them a test. <laughs> they're a volunteer, so you can't interview them. No. no. You know, I mean, it really sucks. And is it your is it your kid's best friend's? Yeah, parent, you, know, you know, or it, is it the director's wife, oh, sure. or you know, the director's kid, or yeah. I mean, it can get you know, it, it can get 
politically fuzzy. No, um, it really can. uncomfortable. It really so, can. So, you know, and um, sometimes I would just say, can you leave me your name and contact information so I can think about that? I'm still okay. I'm still getting organized. That is that is so perfect. That is some Brene Brown stuff is right that, there. Yeah, yeah, that is. I'm just getting organized. <laughs> I don't know how much help I'll need. You know, I mean, I you know, let I, me check the schedule. You, like you, you know, remember sort of Shirley thing. Buchanan? Yeah. I got her resetting lapels on men's shirts with vinegar and water, or men's uh, jackets uh-huh. uh, with vinegar for Hello Dolly. And man, she was queen at that. Yeah, and she told me she couldn't do anything. But <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so okay. Well, I think I think oh, this one's a little under an hour. Yeah. Um, but volunteers gotta be a little careful. And, and we're even saying those with good intent. Oh sure, sure. Can, good intent. Can, bad intent. It's just you know, I guess you know what I'm thinking of is the things that I thought <laughs> were getting done by someone else, and then I had to undo it or redo it. Or I had costumes not show up that I left yeah, with somebody else. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I've, especially like when it's kids. So here I've got like five show choir girls. That this lady, you know, says she's going to hem their dresses and they're not there. Well, it, you know, I felt horrible for these kids. You know, they're kids. This is their experience. You know, they're in high school. They want to have, they're having fun. And everybody's got a pretty dress, but these five well, girls that I, I let also, their costume go. I think go. it's also really awkward. I remember in high school kind of being like, oh, that person's parent. Well, yeah. Messed that up. And so yeah. you could, yeah, that, that sucks. You okay. know, that sucks. I, I have one other good story. If we, we can push this over an hour <laughs> with I bet. So I was not costuming this show. And it was, uh, the musical theater class, and they're supposed to do their own costumes, right? Well, like that, kind of, yeah, yeah, whatever. It, it, it this time. at the time, you know what it was? It was into the woods. Remember the the rehearsal? Were you there? Were the rehearsal where everything went wrong and the girl's wig was in the tree? And no, all I would oh, not. It was that. hysterical and amazing. That show came off, but anyway, the they wound up having like five stepsisters because there were so many they're right kids in to the make, play. And they all come to me, of course, because I've costumed them, and they're like, "We need help. Our dresses are terrible." And blah blah blah. Well, you, you, if you just take them home and do anything to them, and I'm like, "Okay," you know. So, fortunately, I counted. I thought I have six garments here, right? Right. And then I, I did my thing to them. I added trim, and you know, sure. I think somebody needed some boobs done or something, and. And I laid them like on the chair, you know, in front of the door. So I would take them with me in the morning to work so I could take them directly then to the school, right? And I counted them before I left. And I thought, I only have five garments. What happened to number six and which one was it? Oh, it was the pink one. It belonged to Megan. What happened to the pink dress? It was laying on top. I remember the pink dress was laying on top. I walk around the house. The cat has drugged. The oh pink my God. Dress. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> well, that'll cats, so, cats. She didn't hurt it. Uh, yeah, but I just thought, oh my god, I would have gotten there had I not counted right. these dresses. Yeah, and I would have immediately went, oh my god, I don't have Megan's dress. Megan. I would, I would have realized it when I got the there. Cat you know, stole it. But the cat had said, yeah, it just drug it through the house, like you know, to 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 the family room awesome. from the uh, awesome. front door That's pretty funny. funny yep all right everybody well thank you so much for listening to this series on so you want to costume a show and or let, not let, yeah <laughs> let us know what you think over in the self sewn wardrobe facebook group uh you can find us on instagram we are at cd sewing studio and this has been fun we are actually, we have had we have priceless memories from going, from from being in shows and costuming shows we really do and we're going to be talking so all the negative stuff we said just forget about it there you go we are going to be talking a little bit more about some other specific costume things in the future just so you know and uh yeah let us know if you have any other questions or comments or suggestions and i think our next podcast we're going to be recording is a suggestion from a listener so i'm excited about oh that yeah one. yeah yeah so So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.